Hi, my name is Gordon Cooper. I'm an independent program attorney with Texas Law Shield, and I'm here today to talk to you about the law of shooting someone who is fleeing with your property. People ask all the time, Gordon, if someone broke into my house and they've got my stuff and they're running away, can I shoot them? Can I use deadly force against this person? The answer is, it depends. The law does, in very select and limited circumstances, allow for the use of deadly force against someone fleeing with your property. But keep in mind that it still has to go to a jury, and juries look disfavorably on any circumstance where you're shooting someone who does not pose a whole lot of physical danger to you. With that said, what does the law allow? The law states that after someone has committed a robbery, an aggravated robbery, a burglary, or a theft during the nighttime, and they still have your property, if you reasonably believe one of the following two things is true, you are allowed to use deadly force against this person running away. Thing number one, if you could not recover the property by any other means. So for example, a lot of people get mixed up and they say, well, I could make a claim on my insurance, get reimbursed, and buy the property he stole back. Uh, but that is not what the law is talking about. The law means the exact property he has in his arms. So if Usain Bolt broke into my house, stole my grandmother's ashes, and blazed off down the street, I couldn't recover the property by any other means than using deadly force, because there's no way I'm going to catch the guy. So if I use deadly force, that's the only way I could recover that exact property. Alternatively, the other option is if using less than deadly force would put me at a substantial risk of death or serious bodily injury. For instance, if the bad guy has a gun or a knife or there's six of him and one of me, or he's you know a prime heavyweight boxer and I'm a 90-year-old 70-pound woman, these are instances where if I use less than deadly force and I try and get my property back, I'm facing a very real risk of death or serious bodily injury. If that's the case, I can use deadly force. All of this comes with the huge caveat that you have to be reasonable in your use of force in defense of this property. Now, reasonableness doesn't mean what I think is reasonable, doesn't necessarily mean what you think is reasonable. It means what the jury thinks is reasonable. The six to 12 random people who show up for jury selection that day decides whether or not your action was reasonable. So keep that in the back of your mind. Even though I'm saying reasonable belief, it means a belief a jury thinks a reasonable person would have had in those circumstances. Another question we commonly get is, does day or night really affect this? The answer is generally no. Um, the only crime it affects is theft. You can only use deadly force against a theft during the nighttime. During the daytime, you can use force, but not deadly force. Nighttime is defined as 30 minutes after sunset and 30 minutes before sunrise. Real quick though, what is theft? Um, is a very valid question to ask. Burglary is whenever someone breaks into one of your structures and commits a theft inside. So if I smash open the lock to your shed, grab all your stuff, start running away, that's a burglary. Um, robbery is whenever I steal something off of your person through the threat of force or the use of force. So if I punch you in the face, grab your wallet, that's a robbery. Theft then is whenever I'm not breaking into one of your structures, I'm not holding you a gunpoint to do it, but I'm still taking your property. So for example, if you have lawn flamingos, I scoop one up, blaze off down the road, that is a theft. And here in Texas, you can only use deadly force against a theft during the nighttime. Now keep in mind, on top of all that, it still has to be reasonable. Just because the law allows deadly force against a theft during the nighttime doesn't mean you get to bypass this reasonableness qualification. So if I'm stealing your lawn flamingo, a jury may not find that reasonable unless it's a jury filled with lawn flamingo enthusiasts. However, if I've stolen your grandmother's ashes and a priceless vase, that's going to be seen as a lot more reasonable than the alternative. Finally, we get the question all the time, can I defend my neighbor's property? Um, people ask this because their neighbor's going out of town. The neighbor says, hey, can you watch my stuff? And they want to know, am I going to get in legal trouble if I protect their property? The answer is you are allowed to defend your neighbor's property even if the person is fleeing with it, uh, as long as you would be allowed to defend it if it were your own property and you have a reasonable belief your neighbor has requested the protection of their property. Generally speaking, being asked, can you watch my stuff, is going to be good enough. But imagine that you end up shooting someone who's running away with property and yeah, you're justified and yes, your neighbor said, can you watch my stuff. However, the media blows it completely out of proportion. Uh, you've become the newest social pariah. Do you think your neighbor is going to want to pipe up and tell God and everybody, hey, I gave this person permission to shoot somebody? Or do you think it may be more likely that they just clam up in their house and pretend they don't know you? 
That's why I advise you, if you're willing to shoot someone over someone else's property, get it in writing. Say, I, John Smith, hereby agree to protect Joe Schmo's property. He agrees to protect mine. Sign it, date it. If you're super fancy, you can get it notarized. But it's worth putting it on paper because that gives definitive proof of why you had this reasonable belief somebody wanted you to protect their property. Keep in mind, the ultimate analysis is going to be were you reasonable in using deadly force to protect the property that was being taken away and either using less than deadly force would put you at a substantial risk of death or serious bodily injury or you couldn't recover the property by any other means? And that question is decided by the jury.